Well, if you're looking for something to do, at the Tropicana now, there's a really hot, great comedy club. And you know, it's hard because you know, comedy clubs sometimes come and go, but hey, now we have something really going on at the Tropicana, and uh, Mary Sawchuck is there nightly. I mean, yeah. it, 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 and it, it, the setup, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, you, sure. you're, you're a well-known uh, magician, illusionist, mm -hmm. um, and you perform there um, every night except Sunday. Actually, the, it's Friday. We moved uh, it. Friday? Yeah, oh, yeah, no, sorry. we moved it. No, it's Friday now, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Black, Dark Friday. Yep. Yeah. And you go at seven o'clock to uh, for a show, and yeah. then and then after your show, there's other comedians every night doing yeah. their show. Sure. So you can catch Magic um, yeah. every every night by Friday at the yeah. at the Trop and catch Murray, and then uh, then see some comedy after the fact. Sure, yeah, it's a completely different show. So they'd come in, get a ticket, see my show, and if they want to stay longer, you know, go back down the box office, grab another ticket, and see the eight thirty or ten thirty comedy show. So okay. yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about the guy who's with you in a minute. <laughs> exactly right. But, but, but yeah, I mean, that's my yeah, bodyguard. Yeah, but, but you've been doing this for a long time. Sure. You have some great credentials. You uh, you know you really wowed everybody at America's Got Talent uh, mm -hmm. when you did this really grand um, uh, illusion of yeah. making a train appear, yeah. right? Yeah, train Fra vanish. We actually vanish. Vanish. Made yeah. 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 Do you get them to run on time as well? Yeah, well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. You yeah. Know. No, we, you know, I mean, my, it was a train some of my father's. Uh, he worked in the railway for all of his life, right. and it was a train that uh, it was a nice closing effect. It was actually... Uh, Doug's idea to van do something big. I want to do the largest trick ever on America's Got Talent. And we literally found a train that would just barely fit in that sound studio, you know, mm -hmm. and the weight of it and everything else for that stage. And so it's pretty exciting. You know, it was one of those things where when I pulled that cloth, you know, at the vanish, once we covered the train, when I pulled the cloth and I looked back, I was just as excited to see the train <laughs> gone as the audience. It works. Yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> you know, you write these things down. It's yeah. not like you're doing it every day, you know, something right. that size. So we designed that strictly for the actual. Uh, Show. So. Now, at your current show at Tropicana, yeah. um, you really it's not big enough to make trains come and go. So, what, what yeah. kind of uh, illusions or tricks do you do there? Well, we do three main illusions on that stage. And the mm -hmm. great thing with that venue is you're literally a foot away from me. I mean, you are right. I can tell it color your eyes, you know. And I'm used to touring in one, two thousand seat theaters. So, the nice thing with this comedy venue is it's almost like sitting in your own living room, getting entertained, you know. And uh, and it's nice because we're, we do three illusions, and then, of course. Lefty, who's to my right here, which ironically is to my right, to my left, um, he plays my sidekick, and basically what that is, most magicians have an absolutely stunning female right. assistant. We have a girl on the show that, that does work with us, and she's amazing, but she's only on just for the effects and then leaves, and then everything else, which that girl would normally do, he does. Right. So he plays this very bumbling, uh, disgr disgruntled kind of stage yeah, and stage yeah, yeah. tech, and then he also does a, a middle act. He's my guest act in the show. Oh, okay. So it's a nice balance, you know. Uh -huh. And yeah. you do some sleight of hand and some up close magic. Yeah, we do some up close yeah. magic, sleight of hand, and we do things. You know, we basically try to, to make the audience feel like they're in the middle of a production show. It, it just can't get bigger when they hurt. Uh -huh. You know, we've done everything we can. So. Yeah, you saw you have a deck of cards. With I got you. deck of cards. I got a bunch of stuff to show you. Yeah, let's, let's see what you want to see. Something? Yeah, I'd love to. I love so this. I, I wanted to show you something. Yeah. I brought a bottle with me. I want you to check it out because okay. I realize in Vegas we all do various things. So check this bottle out. Have a look at it. Oh, Pretty normal yeah. looking bottle um, of Corona. A bottle of Corona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then well, here's what's really interesting with the bottle of Corona. Yeah. We have an opener, just like that. Check out the opener. Have right. a quick look at that. Now it's a normal looking opener, right? Make sure it doesn't it's slide, a, nothing changes. Yeah, it's a Sylvanair Vegas yes. uh, opener that you get at any yeah. gift shop in town. So basically, <laughs> what I've noticed is if we were to take this opener, sometimes, you know, at, at the bars you see people mess around and they try to open a bottle that, that with their hand because they don't have an right. opener. And it's not a twist off. It's, right. And the worst thing is to, you know, not have one of these. Correct. So I realize if you don't have one of these and you have the bottle, you take this watch very carefully. That's what happens if you do that with a twist oh, on. Yeah. So, isn't that interesting? That's what happens. So it's always handy to have a bottle opener when you're in Las Vegas. So. Great. Yeah, Great. So yeah. Go. So is it, uh, is it drink yeah. any better now? It might. It might. Close it has down, a twist. It just has a twist. It the, fro the, the flow, yes, right? exactly. Throw it with a twist. Exactly. So there you go. Very, so. very clever. Great yeah. trick. Well, and what about some of you just the card things. Are, sure, you want to see some of the cards. I love the card Can we shoot the top of the table? Or no? Is that going to... You know, yeah, we'll I try think we it. can. Okay, great. Let's try this. Let's put that right there. Is that going to block anything? Yeah. So I realized... Um, this will work. Sure, I think we can see that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah okay. good. Okay. Um, so I realized most people, if I ask you, mm -hmm. what's your favorite card? You'd probably say like an ace or a pitcher card, something like that. Correct. <clears throat> most people go with that. I realized my favorite card 
uh, is six of clubs mm -hmm. because nobody chooses that. Right. Whoever picks six of clubs. So I realize I have eight of them. I'm not sure I'm going to put one down like this. Now I have a I have a special card which you'll see in a second, okay. and it's called the magic card, and, and you'll you'll understand in a minute. It's it's a contagious card, and I have eight of these six of clubs. All right, just like so, and uh, let's and then we have this. So this is the contagious card right here, the mm -hmm. uh, the five diamonds. So if you can see, we have eight six of clubs, and if you watch very carefully, we do this. You're watching. Here we go. Hmm. Nice. If you just carefully take yeah. these ones here. Just like that. Just like that. Now the ones that are still turned over, you would expect to be... Expect you would to be expect. A, I am, expect I'm that. expecting to be six o'clock. <laughs> exactly. Right. So if you watch really carefully like this. And right. if you watch very carefully, you put all these together, you're going to love this. You know, like this. Notice so we have one, two, three, Me. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey. Oh. There you go, huh? <laughs> nothing up there. Nothing up there. there. Yeah. It's scary. Unbelievable. Huh? So there you go. All right. That's really great. Thanks. And and so you do some magic as well, Lefty? I do do some magic He's as well. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's very good. Do you want to do something with the yeah. cards? Sure, I'll do something with the cards. I want something. I'll put that away. These are nice. Yeah, see. Can I zoom in? Nice deck. Is that uh, inverse of the regular white, deck? Yeah. There you go. See, all the cards are different. Get a little... Wow, look at that. Take one out, anyone you like. Okay. Look at it, show the camera. Uh, okay, which camera do we have on here? This one? Yeah. Should I zoom in and get a good look at that car? You got it? Keep his eyes closed, Lefty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got it. Yeah. I've seen it before. Put your card on top. One more time, that's the card. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can I see it? Yeah. Great. Most people, when they do play card games at home, poker or blackjack, they cut the cards in half, just like that. Mm -hmm. Since I'm a magician, I cut the cards a special way. I'll show you. I place some of the cards face up, some down, some up, some down. This is called the magician shuffle. Some people just call it sloppy. Right. Now I'll show you all the cards are different. You see some cards are front to back, other cards are back to front, and some cards are even back to back. Now all you have to do is give it a tap. Just give the deck a tap once and look, each and every card now turns <laughs> back in order yeah face up oh. except for one playing card and that one playing card jack of diamonds there our it is. card see yep great trick and that's how you become lefty that's a, <laughs> which i understand has nothing to do with your dexterity <laughs> Uh, ironically, there's a lot of stuff that I've learned how to do with my left hand, or uh -huh. my left hand is stronger doing certain manipulation. In the show, I do actually card manipulation, where I make cards appear and disappear, and some things are actually easier for me to do with my left hand. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you two hook up? Well, a long time ago, we... Big word, the, I guess. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> we were, uh, I was working, yeah. I was living, I was married and living in Orlando, Florida, right. and he was living in New York, because that's where he's from, and we were, uh, he was performing and working in Atlantic City. And I ended up flying up there, and we realized we got booked on a show uh, in Somerset, New Jersey. And I was the opening act, he was a closing act. And it was basically, we had two professionals working, and we had a bunch of local magicians, which is wonderful, you know, because mm -hmm. they're getting their start. And we realized we had a lot in common, traveling and touring and stuff. And I said, well, hey, I'm in, you know, in Orlando, and he said, well, I'm here in New York. And uh, he, he was working with another couple of performers. and. Uh, and then we ended up moving to Vegas. And ironically, he moved here a week before I opened my first show at the Frontier. And we'd had a year and a half, two-year friendship. And I said, hey, um, I need some help consulting on my show. Do you mm -hmm. want to, you know, because it's always nice to have someone that can see from the audience's point of view. And he's always been great at that. And I said, why don't you, you know, come in, help me out. And then he ended up getting into the act and doing the show. And pretty soon he'll be Murray and I'll just be sitting in the audience watching. So I'm pretty excited Once they get about the glasses that. and the hair exactly, popped up. Exactly. Ironically, when I wake up, my hair looks like that, so. You know. <laughs> exactly, right? So, so, so when you create an illusion, um, what's it like when you're performing it the first time on, in, uh, in the public? It's scary. It's like any time you do a, a new joke, you know, you write it mm -hmm. and you go, this, this is funny. And then you go to the audience and it could be just timing. It may be a great, a well-written joke and if your timing's off, it's not funny. Right. So do you try it again next night? Do you try it again? And with magic, same thing. You'll script something, 
you'll go, this is amazing. And then you realize, well, it's maybe not that amazing to someone in the audience because they don't realize the item. So per example is, I use a bowling ball in my show. Well, there's other items that are really cool out there. Mm -hmm. But everyone, at some time in their life, if you're over the age of seven, have usually picked up a bowling ball. You've gone bowling with the family, you've done, so you know there's a lot of weight to it. So I use certain items that people have a relationship with throughout their life. So it's kind of nice, they're, you know, rather than assuming something. You know, if I pick up a trophy, heavy trophy, it weighs 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. Well, if people don't know what that trophy weighs or never held one, that, there's no relation. So you pick up a sink, bowling ball, use those kind of things in your show, people have more relationship. I think relationship. to a certain degree, you get something to a certain point, probably 80% of the way, and then right. you have to do it in front of the audience. As you know, from seeing so many shows in town, the audience really tells you what they like and what they don't like. He might have an idea that I think is great and he thinks is great, but you perform for the audience and it's not what they want to see. So mm -hmm. the audience really dictates what happens in the show. And the, uh, the setup, the story is so mm -hmm. important, right? So it's it called is, sure. Yeah. Of course it is. It is yeah. where you're going with something. Mm -hmm. you know, for example, is the trick I just did for you. If I, if I told you, hey, uh, Ed, I'm going to twist a bottle. Okay, so now, well, now you're already looking for that. Right. Hey, Ed, I'm going to produce an elephant in this cup. But first, make sure, now all of a sudden you're looking for the, you're like, well, uh -huh. did he just say that? So you don't want to put the cart before the horse, you know, as they say. You know, you want to lay it out properly. Mm -hmm. So it is a story, or you're guiding the people into a certain area where they're going to be thinking and understand what's happening or, or not, one or the other. Mm -hmm. you know? so. And are, 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 are illusions getting more and more sophisticated, more technical, you know, particularly with technology, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, becoming such an important factor? I think so, because here's the difference. Nowadays, we can go watch a movie. And now with this 3D stuff, we have magic happening right there in front of our face. Right. And it's not real-time magic, but it really is magic at the end of the day. So here these people are seeing these 3D movies that they're having goldfish swim by them in the theater, like mm -hmm. right here. So now they come to see a, a live magic show. How can you duplicate that kind of a feeling? It's almost impossible in real time. Right. So it does push the envelope trying to create some cool But things. I think because of the venue you're in at the Tropicana, because it's such an intimate venue, people really enjoy seeing the magic so close up. I mean, as Murray says, you can actually look out into the audience and see people. I mean, people can almost touch the magic. Right. So as opposed to being in a huge theater where the magic's so far away, I think people enjoy the fact that they can see the magic so close. Mm -hmm. And this is the Laugh Factory. Oh yeah, it's called the Laugh Factory, the Laugh Factory at, the at the Tropicana. And it's, they have two yeah. theaters. They have the main theater downstairs that holds right. like a thousand people. And they have the comedy club in the second level mezzanine, which is the Laugh Factory. Nice owns. room. I've Great room. been there multiple times over yes. the years. It's, uh, it's, it's, as you said, it's an intimate room. Yeah. It's comfortable. There's not a bad seat no. anywhere. And no, and the nice thing is you're really up close. I mean, the nice thing is when you come to see me, you're seeing me. There's no, you're way in the back, and I think that's him. You know, you're there. Yeah. And, and how much of the cost? What the costs that? are twenty two ninety five for general admission, right. and then for a VIP is forty four ninety five, and, and you get a line pass, get set up close, meet and greet afterwards, and everything. Yeah, I mean, when you come, you yeah. know, when you, when you think about well, what am I going to do tonight, you know, yeah. and by the time you go to a movie and buy popcorn and buy a couple of drinks, you're in at twenty two bucks anyway. Yeah, here, here you can go to the the comedy club, see live entertainment, uh, yeah. see Murray Lefty exactly. may even be there. And we have two for one yeah. uh, locals and yeah. military discounts, so you yeah. know, I have for everybody. So. Yeah, and, I, and I heard he wears a hot pants suit. I do. Oh. I wear a hot pants suit. <laughs> Look out with a hat. Look at that. Huh? Okay, we're at the, <laughs> at the uh, Laugh Factory at the uh, Tropicana yeah. Hotel, yep. 7 o'clock every night but Friday. That's it. Come by and check it out, Ed. Okay, and Great. we'll be right back. <laughs>